The problem with the, the final authority, the typical statement of faith, again, that the scriptures of Old and New Testaments are inspired by God and inerrant in the original writings that they are the supreme and final authority in faith and life. We do not have the original writings. That goes back to our original study, remember, in the Greek and anti-Semitism? That's somebody that gets up in the pulpit, in the Greek, in the Greek, in the Greek. You ain't got the Greek. Nestles? Which one? Kittles? I'm getting out of your church. And that started off just now in the Greek and anti-Semitism is not of our study of the Bible, but that began our study of the Bible. We've been seven by now. It should read they were, not are. Because you can't get a copy of the originals. And there's that. You know, there's that in the original game. They don't exist. And anybody, a scholar, pastor, preacher, Sunday school teacher, you walk up to them in the originals, show me the originals. eBay, Amazon, Walmart, Christian Bookstore. Any of those dot coms. We'll go down to your cellar of your house in the deep tar corner and we pull up the, the, the stone floor, go down another set of stairs and there. It's the same thing as the nonsense of the morons in, in Utah and behind their, their sacred uh, safe or whatever. They're hiding the golden You cannot see or produce the original writings to view. I want to see it. They are. We have no final authority. We don't have the originals. The word of God is the authority. The word of God is the originals. They are, again, no originals. So your youth state. The youth today, the growing Christians today, are saying that there's no absolute truth in the churches because they know that their scholarly leader of the church and their scholarly teacher of the of the seminaries, they know they're full of bunkers. Though their though their instructors and pastors and leaders of the churches don't know, and they think they know. There is no absolute truth. The statement of Christian teens and young adults. I'm not making that statement. There is no absolute truth. That is the statement of Christian teens and young adults today. Thanks to in the original writings, in the original Greek, the butt warmers of the pews in the churches have more sense than the man standing behind the pulpit or the podium giving a lecture about something we don't have and never seen. It's the sacred cow of scholarship. In 1991, 52 percent believed again. The 52 percent born again church kids. There is no absolute truth. 52% in 1991. In 1994, 62% there is no absolute truth. In 1999, 78% who call themselves born again. There is no absolute truth. You're doing a good job, Pastor. You're doing a good job, Sunday school teacher. You're doing a good job, scholar, instructor, Dr. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so. You're doing a great job for the devil. In 2002, 
91% young, born-again, professing, attending church regularly. There is no absolute truth. They, they, they went to church, they, they, they professed to be saved, and they sit under uh, in a pew under the pulpit of a man that says the original writings in the original Greek, and they look at that like, yeah, in all the years we sat in this church, you've never produced once that original. And the teachings, your teachers behind that pulpit is a bunch of bunk. So we don't believe the whole thing. In 1991, 52%. 1994, 62%. 1999, 78%. 2002, 91%. I wonder what it is in 2020. There is no absolute truth in, in the church in 2020. It's filled with games and carnivals and, and you know, nonsense. VBS has no absolute truth because you got 10 minutes of Bible and 45 minutes of garbage. And I know I've been in two VBSs and will never be in another VBS again as long as I live. This statement of the youth were taught that there is no absolute authority true by their pastors, their Sunday school teachers, their instructors, church school, or institutions. You got kids with a King James Bible going into seminary today, and they're coming out modern Bibles. And they're taking their King James Bibles, they go in and throw it in the garbage can and coming out with the world and the devil. Thank God the school I went to stayed King James, was King James, is King James, and I came out more of a King James Bible believer. I came out to give you this lesson about the King James Bible. How's that? You know, this, not, this is 116 pages. Your typical graduate of seminary today could not expose what I am exposing today. You have no idea. And they don't believe it. Okay, so. Psalms 138, verse 2. <coughs> Excuse me. I will worship toward the holy temple. That's not church. I read today. I, was, I read the first 10 chapters of Psalms today. I forget, chapter 2 or 3. Maybe 4. And to thy holy place. And then, you know, today, oh, that's the church. There was no church in Psalms. Thy holy temple. And praise the name of thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. You know what? God takes the word of God above the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know what seminaries and pastors and Sunday school teachers and instructors and church schools and institutions do with the word of God? They soil it. They garbage it. They shred it. They tear it apart. They... God says, I've taken my word above it all my name. Philippians 2.10 <clears throat> That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow all things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. Everything that is living and breathing and has died is going to proclaim Jesus. And God says about the word of God, the word of God is above Jehovah. The word of God is above Jesus. How's that? I, I've been in prison ministry. Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. Speak one for English, please. And yet there's a name above Yeshua. There's a, no, there's a name above Jehovah. It is called the Word of God. 
the final authority, the absolute truth that the churches in the seminaries today profess not and are teaching their people and their students not. Acts 4.12. <clears throat> Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved, and that name is the name of Jesus Christ, and the word of God is above the name of Jesus Christ. John 1.1 1, 1 says the word is Jesus. Luke 1.31 and 32. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, dark in the Mary, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, capital S. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and the word of God is exalted above the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Lord Jesus Christ, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, and there is only one name above name for us to be saved. That name is Jesus, and the Word of God is above Jesus. According to Psalm 138, verse 2. The Word of God. The name of Jesus is yet a higher than the name of Jesus, the word of God. John 12, 47 to 50. If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me rejecteth not my words. I mean, excuse me. He that rejected me receiveth not my words. As one that judges him. The word that I have spoken. At judgment, the word of God will judge man. The same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He has given the commandment what I should say it's all about the writing it's all about what he said it's all about the word of god and what i shall speak and know that his commandment is life everlasting whatsoever i speak therefore even as the father said unto me so i speak it's what he said it is written it's what he spoke. It's what he said. The final authority. Number one. The word of God. Now let's go back over here. <clears throat> the scriptures of the new and of the old and new testament are inspired by God inerrant in the original writings. There are no original writings. And because of your nonsense behind the podium and behind the pulpit. The youth say that there is no absolute truth. 1991, 52% born again kids. There's no absolute truth. 1994, 62% said there's no absolute truth. 1999, 78 who call 78% of those that call themselves born again. There is no absolute truth. 2002, 91% of the youth. Born again profession, attend church regularly. There is no absolute truth. Psalms 138.2, the word of God is magnified above thy name. There's something wrong with the lives of seeing church aid with the closed door, Satan inside the church, Jesus standing at the door, knocking on the church. I am rich. We have a wonderful, great church. We have a wonderful pastor. And God says, you're wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind. And you have no authority of my word. 
I've sat in King James Bible churches and that man got up from the pulpit and changed the very word in God in front of our ears and no one caused a stir but Stiley Hayward. And Stiley Hayward's not in that church no more and the pastor got all upset because in John chapter 14, he's going to a room, I'm going to a mansion. <clears throat> The word of God, Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, sayings, and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, Sayings of mine, sayings of mine. There's got to be a sayings. There's got to be a word of God. What did the kids say? 1991, there's no absolute truth. 1994, there's no absolute truth. 1999, there's no absolute truth. 2002, there's no absolute truth. 2020, there's no absolute truth. Can I have my Tootsie Roll now? Can we watch a Veggie Veggie Tales movie? Everyone that hears these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened to a foolish man. That's the church today. Foolish, which built his house upon the sand. House is a house. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. I ain't talking about a building, a carnal Christian. Oh, that's the bricks and stones and doors and isn't it great? And thy house. Upon sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon the house. And it fell. And great was the fall of it. There's coming a great destruction of the church age. Before the rapture. She's trembling down now. She's trembling down now. She's coming down now because she doesn't have the words of Jesus Christ. So we'll look at that. Revelation 20, verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, and stand before God. And the books were open. Another book was open, the, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were judged in the books according to their work. God is not the judge. What is written in the books are the judges. What God has written about us. The final authority is the written word of God. Now we got a series of lessons here. And what do we got? We got one. Two, we got two. We got more coming up. But, um, let's just let's, let's take the word of God and see what we can do with 18 minutes. Psalms 138, verse 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness. And for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. We just read that. Okay, ready? For the lesson, for the teaching, for the edification, for the learning, for the, the fair use law, copyright law, for fair loot. I'm trying to teach you something. That, you got to say that for the, for the modern Bibles, because the modern Bibles are copyrighted. The King James 1611 ain't copyrighted. NIV. <clears throat> I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your solemn decree that it suppresses your frame. What happened to the W-O-R-D in the NIV? No final authority, sir. 
They cut the W O R D for a D E C R E E. I think there's a deodorant called decree. Why don't you use it to wash your filthy arms and your armpits and get back to the W O R D? Are you not supposed to not to add and subtract the word of God? You failed. I'm going to make a bold statement here. I believe people who change the Bible, I don't think they're saved. I don't think they can be saved unless they truly repent and get right. But we'll move on. The RSV. I bow down toward thy holy temple and give thanks to thy name for thy steadfast love and faithfulness. For thou hast exalted above everything thy name and thy word. Thy name and thy word. There are two authorities in the RSV. Thy name and thy word. In the King James Bible, thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. How you like that one? They split one into the two. The NIV, just let's just change the word. The RSV, we split it in half. The Living Bible. <laughs> oh, that's the Bible that had SLB in it. That's how my grand. That's how I got my grandma into the King J King's Jimmy Bible. That's a private little joke, but. She had the Living Bible, and she would not come to the King James Bible until I showed her the SOB. The SOB got the Living Bible in the garbage can, and she went and got a St. Jimmy's Bible. Again, it's a, it's a King James, but that's a private joke. You just had to love my grandma. I face your temple as I work, worship, and give thanks to all, give, give thanks to you for all your loving kindness and your faithfulness. For the promises are backed by all the honor of thy name. No W-O-R-D. But promise. All the word of God is not a promise. I guess it's name it, claim it. Yea, has God said, it's not a promise. And David saw, saw a woman washing herself. That's not a promise. What was it that Job wrote? Uh, the, 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 something of robbers prosper. That's not a promise. That, that's an angry, sarcastic man who's been dealing with three friends. The second authority of thy name in the Living Bible. And that's only the beginning of, of we're going to be looking at these Bibles. Right, I saw them. We're coming up to it. I promise you. Or did I accidentally skip some pages? No, I didn't skip any pages. All right. <clears throat> Revelation 19, 12 to 13. And I'm reading on, you can pause. When I come up to a part of scripture, you can pause, find it, and continue. His eyes were as a flame of fire. He's angry. His head were many crowns. Amen. And he had a name written that no man that no man knew. At the end of the tribulation, at the end of seven years, no man on earth knows the name of the man that's coming back on that horse. The Antichrist did a great job. He is clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Jesus Christ on the second advent hops on that horse with the church to follow him and his name is the word of 
God, it will not be an NIV. It will not be an RSV. It will not be a living Bible. It will not be a new King James Bible. It will be the King James Bible coming back. And I believe you're not going to see many of the scholars, pastors, preachers, Sunday school teachers, instructors. They probably won't be behind Jesus Christ coming back with the camp. Again, I find it very hard for someone to be saved and change in the word of God. His name is the word of God. John 1, 1 through 4. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Creator. Jesus Christ is the Creator. No theistic evolution, no evolution. Creation by Creator of the Word. Thus saith the Lord, let there be light. Thus saith the Lord, let the earth be gathered together, let the waters be the same was the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the life was the light of men. I am the light of the world. That's Jesus Christ. 1 John 1.1 1, 1. And that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. The word, the word, the word. Thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. The NIV removes the word. The TLB removes the word. The RSV, the word, and then the name. You better believe the authority of the King James Bible. Some preachers have more grace than I do. I, if it's not the King James Bible, I'm really not sure about salvation, if it's what Bible is being used. I'm strict. The new Bibles don't have blood. You need the blood to be saved. 1 John 5, 7. 1 John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, capital F. The Word, capital W. And the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Are you ready? The NIV. For there are three that testify. That's it. That's 1 John 5, 7 for the NIV. Again, the NIV has removed W-O-R-D. Again, the R NIV has removed the F-A-T-H-E-R, the capital F. And the NIV has removed the Holy Ghost. Hopefully by next week's lesson, you have thrown out the NIV and got a King James Bible. Say, stop, I got me a King James Bible. I'm ready to find out about Jesus and the Word of God. The RSV, the really stupid version. And the Spirit is the witness because the Spirit is the truth. Jesus said he's the truth. No Father, no W-O-R-D and the RSV. But there was the W-O-R-D when we came to Psalms 138 verse 2. They contradicted themselves, the RSV. Oh, there's contradictions in the Bible. Yeah, the modern Bibles, not the King James. Thanks to the scholars, thanks to the doctors, thanks to the, to the, the, the instructors, thanks to the pastors, thanks to the educators, thanks to <coughs> schools and churches. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 1991, 52% said there's no absolute truth. 1994, 
62% just said there's no absolute truth. 1999, 78% there's no absolute truth. 2002, 91% there's no absolute truth. Thank you, pastors. Thank you, Sunday school teachers. Thank you, instructors. Thank you, doctors. Thank you, seminaries, for destroying the word of God. All right. First John 5, 7, the living Bible. Are you ready? I'm going to read the King James again. Ready? For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Now an easy, more reliable translation of the Bible to make it simple for people to understand for $19.99 and a bucket of bull. Do do. You can have the living Bible. Are you ready? Whew. And we know he is because God said with a voice from heaven that Jesus was baptized. Again, he was facing death. Yes, not only at the baptism, but also he faced death. And the Holy Spirit forever, truth says it too. So we have three witnesses, the voice of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our hearts, the voice from heaven at Christ's baptism, and the voice before he died. And they all say the same thing, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Where is W-O-R-D? And where do you get the rest of the baloney? That was 1 John 5, 7 in the Living Bible. I'd rather learn the King James Version of 1 John 5, 7 than the living brat. They have taken away the final authority, the NIV, the RSV, the living Bible. That's just three of them. We're not going to go through them all. But they have taken away the 91, 1991, 50% of people say there's no absolute truth. 1994, 62 say there's no absolute truth. 1999, 78% uh, there's no absolute truth. 2002, 91. I can imagine what 2020 is because the modern Bibles have no W-O-R-D. And then the crap that the, that the, that the Baptist churches put in. They eliminate the word. I, I one in church. I went in one church. Third, three quarters of an hour singing and karaoke. Put a CD in and sing to the CD, and then fifteen minutes of the preacher up there couldn't find his cough drop and speak clearly enough to give us a fifteen little mess on Sunday morning message. And then another church. You know, he gets up there. He's got a King James, but he's got another Bible inside his King James. Don't you fool me. I've been around. I've been saved for 33 and a half years. You write me and I'll give you the name of the churches I were in and the pastors. If you can give me why you, you need that information. I can give you a name of a church right now where before the service, the church was selling tickets to a, to a keg party that would happen that afternoon. A Baptist church. At the second coming, they don't know the name of God. Revelation 19, 12, and 13. 19, verse 13 of Revelation tells you the name, the word of God. So it looks like the Antichrist is going to eliminate the word of God. And he's already begun in the modern Bible. He's already begun in the seminaries. Listen, I get reports from, from Pensacola and Liberty and all that from people I know there. I get reports from these colleges on what they're doing behind the classroom doors. What they're doing with the Bible. I've got friends in the ministry. <clears throat> I'm no stranger to it. 
I've known men in the boba in the Greek. I'm like, I'm sitting here. No, you ain't got it. There are many Bible colleges, seminaries, uh, seminaries, but I call them seminary, sin. Institute, church schools, churches, and books. Bible stupidity. There are in few churches, children that have not gotten out of the grammar school that know their Bible more than some pastors of churches and PhDs and doctors. There are smarter children under the 10th grade that know more than somebody who's got a, a, a diploma with a doctor or a PhD title to them. And the same PhDs and doctors and instructors and the intelligent, the elect, they don't care. The born again Bible believer reads and brings his Bible to learn more. For he believes it is the very word about uh, the very word of God. They do not try to change the word of God. They don't mess with the word of God. They love the word of God. And the church's problem today, besides the broken families, the church problem today is the lack of faith in, of the word of God. And you can thank the scholars, the PhDs, the doctors, the pastors, the preachers, the teachers, the educators. And the modern Bibles. Now we have stepped forth now on the first step of our study of the King James Bible. We're going to stop there. You may be angry with me. You may not like me. I don't care. It's not me you don't like. You don't like. I just gave you a nice good kick to your knee. And brought you down on your, brought you down flat on the ground. And you're, you're in pain. But relax. I'm Dr. Stiley William Hayward too. I'm just not a fool. Anybody who messes with the Bible, I call a fool. A fool that has said in his heart, there is no God. And you wouldn't say there's a God if you, if you didn't mess with his word. 